Thanks for joining us for another Kickstarter conniption. Today we're looking at Samurai Brothers from Moon Rock Games. And as always, we want to make sure you're aware that our Kickstarter conniption videos are sponsored in part by our Kickstarter backers and by the creators of this game. Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows. And today we're previewing the game Samurai Brothers from Moon Rock Games. This is from designer Carrie King. This is a two to four player card battling game that's coming to Kickstarter soon. We were able to get our hands on a prototype copy of the game. So let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, lay out all of the samurai heirlooms, guards, and senseis. Deal everyone seven ninja cards, and then snake draft the rest of the cards until everyone has the set for your player count, and then you're ready to begin. On your turn, you may use your heirloom's one-time ability if you choose so, you may use your sensei's ability, and then you may take two actions. During the first two rounds of the game, everyone must take two dojo actions by placing ninjas into their dojo, and then they will draw back up to their hand limit from their choice of either the ninja deck or the action deck. In later rounds, players may use one or two of their actions to play action cards, which do things like legendary ninja attacks or allow you to steal someone's heirloom. The player being attacked has the opportunity to block if they have the right cards. During an attack, they can use their ninjas in the dojo to defend, they can use their guards, and possibly even counterattack. Whatever damage they cannot deflect will cause their samurai to lose health. Play continues until one dojo has collected all the heirlooms, or one samurai is left standing, having defeated his foes with his samurai brothers. Samurai Brothers is a fast-paced card battling game that features some strangely adorable baby ninja art. Uh, in the game, you will be attempting to basically be the last man standing, or if you can pull it off, steal everyone else's heirlooms, which might be easier in a smaller player count, and be the wealthiest, most rich, and powerful samurai in the universe. In the game, you have those two actions on your turn. The first two rounds, you will only be doing the dojo, which is laying down a ninja in your dojo area. Otherwise, uh, when you take your two actions later in the game, you can play action cards, but if you would like to take a dojo action, you must do that last. So if you play action, you do an action first and then do a dojo, two actions or two dojo. And that's where the majority of the decision making is in the game, looking at what you have on the table and what is in your hand, which deck do you decide to draw from. You've got to be able to defend yourself on future turns, but you really want to find those sweet, sweet action cards that allow you to steal heirlooms or knock people out of the park. Yeah, and you don't just get to take those actions for free. Almost all of them require you to send the ninjas from your dojo to do the attacking, so those are discarded. Um, some of them allow you to choose um, just a value so you can take as many as you want, or some of them require specific ninjas. Other ones you may be able to mix and match if you have matching colors. Yeah, you really are hoping to be able to just build up a really powerful dojo full of who cares what kind of ninjas so that as people attack you, you'll have plenty of defense. The game uh, experience is pretty similar for player counts. When you have uh, more players, it's going to be a whole lot harder, as I kind of mentioned, to get all the heirlooms into your collection. Uh, it's going to be probably easier to team up with some people and take each other out. And that's really going to add another dynamic to the game as well because you pretty much have to be... you. It's going to be more exciting if you play it verbally and you're like, hey, we've got to crush that guy. Everybody focus on him. Take him out. And so it is obviously a player elimination game. Uh, and when you do that verbal discussion, it's going to add more interest to it rather than just, uh, I'm going to stick one a damage attack on this guy this time and one over here next time. And we'll see if we can wear each other down. Yeah, in the game, there are some options as far as um, who you attack and what types of attacks that you do. There are also cards in the deck that allow you to block every type of uh, attack that may come to you, including the stealing of heirlooms, stealing of guards, 
um, stealing of senseis. Uh, if you ever get to a point where your sensei is stolen, there is um, a pool of them out uh, on the table that then you can replace it. It doesn't come into effect until the following round, so you may be around without one. Um, but you will get that power back um, for the next round. So um, that is also available in the game. Now we actually received a prototype copy of this game quite a ways back and we played through it several times and the rules have kind of changed, things have been modified, new art has been added. So we've seen a lot of improvement uh, and a lot of growth in the game. It'll be interesting to see what is involved in their Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we have only seen prototype components and art, although all of it has kind of improved over time. So it'll be really neat to see that hit the actual Kickstarters. Yeah, this sounds like something you're interested in. You can check out their campaign. And thanks again for checking our video out here and subscribing to Tantrum House. Adorbs baby ninjas. Everyone must take two dojo actions. Two do- During the first two rounds of the game, everyone must take two dojo actions by placing nin- Having defeated the others, rising victorious. <laughs> Sorry. I told you this one needed help at the end. Did we get it all? We did. We won!